Alright, check this out. This program right here. I found it the other day while I was browsing some forums. It's called Sony. Yeah, browsing forums is cool because there's a lot of really smart people out there that know a lot more than I do. So when I browse a forum, I can just, bam, I get instant knowledge that I never would have found on my own. So anyways, let's take a look at this Thony thing. Well, it was written by uh, some university professor at the, uh, let's see, the University of, uh, what is it, um, University of Tartu, whatever that is. And he has his own demo video right here. But uh, I'm going to make my demo video um, just because I can. You know, because I got this huge ego. Whatever. Um, so, like, and I don't know Python. So, hey, this is a great tool for me, right? So I just Googled how to do a uh, ternary. And, yeah, I guess I guess ternaries in Python suck. Normal ternary, it's condition, uh, result one, result two, right? Well, in Python, I guess a ternary is like more like Perl. It's uh, expression if condition else num and you know what i just don't like i don't like it so let's let's change this factorial function it's just a factorial a recursive factorial function let's change it to not have um the ternary right so i guess it would be uh what is it um if oh you don't need parentheses for python conditions that's right that's cool so um this would be what we do if it's true right so we say if if num is greater than one, we need a colon, right? Okay, look at this. I don't even know Python. And uh, no semicolons, right? And then need white space sensitivity, right? And then do you just put a colon? And then, all right. Oh, and notice that if I make like a, uh, a mistake, like maybe, um, there we go. So let's pretend I'm a C programmer or any kind of programmer. And I put a semicolon, I mean a curly brace. Well, Look at that. Everything just turned gray. That's Phony telling me, hey, there's an error right there. Okay? Now, in some editors, it'll highlight the error. Look what Phony does. I mean, it just, bam, that is so obvious, right? So I go, oh, maybe I didn't want that. And then, hey, you know what? Let's see what happens if I run this without the colon. Because, like, honestly, I don't, I, I think it's going to be an error. Let's just, let's just see real quick. So I'm going to hit F5 to run it. And, oh, of course, we get our syntax error down there. So that's looks like we also have the regular error reporting, which is great. Okay, now it should work now. Uh, let's see what happens when I run this recursive function through Thani. What do we see? Uh, okay, well F5 to run it, and um, oh, is that a, is it complaining about the semicolon? Um, I don't really know what's going on. It's trace back. Whatever equals factorial three. What's the problem? In unsupported operand types for multiplication. Maybe I was supposed to put return. Look at me. I'm making all these new mistakes. Okay, it runs. It runs. Great. It runs. And uh, it looks like I have whatever in my variables over here on the right. And I don't even know if this is going to work, but uh, maybe I can actually... Oh, no tab completion. Oh, look at that! After running the program, you are left with like a live REPL that has everything you just ran. That is awesome. I've been looking for a tool that does this. Normally, I have to load a, load a, a, a script file into a REPL. In, in Node.js, for example, you have to type .load script, um, script name, and it loads the script in, but it doesn't run it, right? Well, this is cool. You can not only write a bunch of functions that you want to use, right? I can call factorial maybe a five, and it works, right? Not only does it load the scripts in, but it runs the code. It, it's basically like the uh, preamble to the REPL. I mean, this is an absolutely cool tool, and I haven't even gotten into the main part of the video yet, so let's just, let's do that, enough of my talking. We're going to go into debug mode, right? So it's, uh, what is it, run, debug, current script. So I'm going to hit Control F5, though, because, you know, actually clicking buttons is for total noobs, right? So Control F5. And let's see what the computer sees, right? This is what us teachers know. We know what the computers see, but the beginners don't know, right? A beginner student might see, oh, a function definition. I guess I'm running the code now, right? Well, we know better, but they don't, right? Well, let's see what Thani sees. It's highlighting the entire function definition, and I would say it's reading the function definition in. So let's see what happens when we step into the code, and I'm just going to hit the hotkey for that F7. Look at that. It skipped over the function definition. What a perfect way to show students that function definitions don't actually run. 
All right, so let's see what happens now. Okay, I'm declaring a variable whatever. I'm assigning it the return value of factorial 3. So it looks at the right-hand side, uh, factorial 3. It wants to evaluate this. So what does it do? Okay, it looks at the argument. And uh, 3 evaluates to 3. Okay, I guess this is like JavaScript where even primitives evaluate to themselves. Cool. All right, so we're, we're, we're passing... And bam, there's the magic. There's the magic. We are now in a new window in our stack or whatever, right? Because now we're in another function off in memory. And bam, we have a new window to represent that. I mean, isn't that freaking cool? And at the bottom, we have num. See, local variables. I mean, I didn't have to do any setup to get this working. Whereas every every code editor that I've ever worked with at Dianza, it was like we had to go through all these menus and check boxes to make it work, and it was hard to read. Look how easy it is to do this in Thonny. All I did was install it last night. I didn't set up anything, and it already works like this. Anyways, let's move on. I'm going to step into it. Num greater than 1? Well, we can see num right there. It's 3, so we can say, well, I think it's going to be greater than 1. Well, sure enough, it turns num into 3, and you can see the whole expression, and it keeps going. It's true! I mean, this is perfect for a beginner. Even though my students don't know Python, I'm still going to show them this tomorrow. Or today, actually. I have to go into work in like an hour. Okay, let's see. So, hey, that was true. We're going to execute the uh, whatever codes in that if condition. Uh, what do we see? Well, this is an expression, right? So I guess we're evaluating the expression. And I'm, Okay, I'm going to guess that we evaluate the left-hand side. Yep. So we're evaluating the arguments to the left-hand side. Two, and bam, look at that. Further into the stack heap or whatever it's called, because honestly, I should have paid more attention in, in class. We go. Okay. Now it says num is two. Two is greater than one. Okay, so you're a teacher. You don't need me to baby you through this. I'm just going to step through it now. Okay, so now we're returning the uh, nums, I suppose. All right, and apparently whatever has six. And I finished my program, and normally, see, normally the thing that I don't like about debuggers is that when you finish your program, you're done. And if you if you wanted to get if you wanted to like look at that last phase, now you gotta go through your whole program, because because I never got too good with the debugger. I didn't know if there was like a step backwards thing. Okay, well check this out. I'm remember what I said at the beginning how how the the code up here is basically just a preamble to the REPL down here. Well, sure enough, we can see that we've got our whatever over there. So now I have that piece of data to work with, even though the debug session is over. This is just a, such an absolutely cool tool, and uh, I think it's just great for any beginner programmer. Not just Python, but any programmer. Because every programmer needs to learn how everything's evaluated, and what the computer does, and what order. And even though this is, you know, Python, and not, for example, C++, or Java, or whatever programming language that your class may be learning, the principles are the same, right? As long as it's a C-based family, right? You know, as long as it's not like Haskell or Lisp or something, right? And even then, it's arguably very similar. Uh, then the principles apply, right? The order of evalu evaluation, the idea that everything is evaluated and passed to other things, right? Like, it's all the same. It doesn't matter what programming language you're in, right? So, awesome tool, and um, I hope this was not a waste of your time.